I am certified pet professional Amy Lee. The only difference between you and your groomer is knowledge, techniques, and tools. It is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry. So stay put as we get started on this journey together today. Thank you for joining me live from the grooming table. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003, but more importantly, I am your go-to groomer on the web, and it is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry so that you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home. That's pretty cool, isn't it? We share here on this channel every Monday at 5.30, live from the grooming table. I'm so excited about the topic tonight, guys. It's a good one. Not just for somebody who's ready to jump in or thinking about jumping into pet grooming. This involves you guys too, because I know a lot of my friends out there, you guys, groom your own pets at home. So this is very good information. Um, what we're doing tonight, we're talking about how to get started as a pet groomer. Tools that you need to begin. They will cost you less than $1,000 to start up. That's not a lot of investment. And it's a great, it's a great career if it's something you're interested in. Now, there's only 20 items that you really actually need to get started as a pet groomer. We're talking tools and products. And I'm going to talk about those specifically today. I'm gonna to show you. I'm gonna show you where to get them and why you need them and how to use them. We'll talk about all that. So here's the thing, if you're a groomer at home and you're taking care of your pet, you can eliminate at least, at least about 10 of those items. Um, you can get by with eliminating a lot of things to produce a quality groom at home. And, and we talk about all those things all the time, guys. So I am gonna verify out there as we're moving along here tonight, which products um, when we're talking about the groomer startup kit, we're talking about a groomer startup kit, something that you can take as a professional and get started for less than $1,000. And I think that's super awesome. Now, the tools that I use today, I have upgraded many of them over the years, but I started with some basic tools. They were good tools. I found some better expensive brushes versus the brush I started with, more expensive combs versus the comb I started with, or combs, um, some better, more expensive shears that I use now that I didn't use when I started. But here's the thing, when I started, I produced beautiful work. You can do it. Obviously, you don't wanna make the granddaddy investment up front. You gotta see how it goes. And as you start working with your tools and with different breeds, you'll start to find, hey, you know what, this scissor, I'm, I'm not, I would like something that's lighter, or my clipper, it doesn't feel good to me, I wanna upgrade my clipper. And those are things you'll upgrade along the way. As you have a client base and a steady schedule, it's no big deal to upgrade equipment, trust me. You'll do what, you just do what you need to do. And it's worth it, you'll make good money. So, you know, pet groomers are in high demand too, guys. So I'm really happy to bring this subject out there to you guys. I'm really glad that we're gonna talk about it. And, and I have a lot to say and a lot to share, and I'm excited to accept your questions, any concerns that you guys have, because I've been through a lot in pet grooming and I, I should have an answer for you. So don't ever hesitate to throw a question at me in this chat, okay? That's what we do. Groomers, good groomers, are very sought out, very sought out, and there's not enough of them, I can tell you. There's not enough groomers out there. Pets are a huge part of our lives, and it's becoming more and more and more. Households, you know, have two, three dogs. It's very common. Instead of one, maybe two, they have three, maybe four now. You know, it, it's, it's great. Now, in this video, I am going to guide you and help you find the grooming products online that won't break your budget. That's important too. As a beginner groomer, you, you wanna buy good tools that will produce quality results, but you don't wanna break the bank. You don't need to break the bank. You're gonna make some mistakes along the way. You're gonna drop some tools. You're gonna, you're gonna find out how to maintain your tools as you groom, as you move along. But most importantly, we're looking for stuff that produces quality results, and I am sharing those products with you tonight, guys, no problem. Uh, all you need 
is a starter kit to get started. And that's what we're gonna share. And that will, that will, that starter kit will allow you to groom any breed. I do wanna say that, okay? So now, some telemarketers ringing my phone. Now that we've gotten all that out of the way, I'm ready to jump in and start talking tools. But before that, I wanna see you guys and say hello because I love seeing you guys on Mondays. It makes my day. So we have Raquel Grant here. She's my girl from Nebraska. Good to see you. She says she's my number one fan. I believe her, she's always there for me. She is something. She has a great dog named Miles, love him. We have Ashley Hoots here. Hi, Ashley, it's great to see you. And we have Blaze Marl. Hey, she jumped back in. Blaze was here last weekend. So glad to have you back. Last week, least weekend, did I say? Ginger Hughes is here. Hi, Ginger, you're gonna like this one, girl. Debbie Jack's here. Debbie, you're gonna like this. Good, see, kind of inspired by my emails and my comments that I get from you guys. And I realize it's time that we really talk brass tacks about how to get started as a pet groomer and what tools you need to do that. There are other things you need to get started as a pet groomer. Tonight, we're talking about tools. Okay, so we also have Lexi. Hi, Lexi Galloway. I'm so glad to, to see you. We love it when you join us. Joseph's here from Spain. Hi, Joseph. Thanks for joining us. My mom's here. Hi, mom. That's Joanne. I'm glad you're here, mom. Bridget, good to see you, Bridget. You're gonna love this one. Thank you for joining us. Jennifer Jordan's here. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for jumping in. Good to see you. And, oh, our MN Country Gal is here. I'm so, she has a golden doodle too. Can't remember the golden doodle's name. It's slipping my mind. It's a big black one. She's beautiful. Young dog, glad to see you. Tanya Smith, oh, this is our new friend. I think Tanya Smith is friends with Raquel. So she's joining us today. Thank you for joining us, Tanya, I'm so excited. Daisy Like a Flower's here, isn't that a cool name? I love to say it, Daisy Like a Flower. Yes, okay, Michelle, glad you jumped in, Michelle. And I see Bridget again, I'm so glad you're here, Bridget. Michelle, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Irene is here, oh, I love you. Oh, and Lisa's here. Oh, I'm so excited. I've missed you guys. Lisa's always busy. I'm so glad you're able to join us, Lisa. We missed her, didn't we, guys? Irene, Lisa's here. New Tanya from Nebraska. Ah, oh, feeling the love. Okay, and I'm in Pennsylvania, so we're all over the map, guys. We've got Joseph in Spain. We're, we're just coming together everywhere. Thank you, guys, all of us. Oh, Tanya has four Havanese. Great. I wonder if you do some of that grooming on your own, girl. If you do, this is good. We're gonna talk about tools. It may, it may give you some food for thought, some trade in some old tools for some better tools. We'll talk about it. Yes, she has four fur babies. That is so awesome. Hello, Brenda, good to see you. I'm glad you jumped in. Well, guys, let's not waste any more time here. I'm excited, okay? I've put these tools together for you. I'll be here each time if I, I know you would be if you could, Lise. I'm just glad when you can join us. I know you do when you can. I'm so glad. And Brenda's from Canada. This is awesome. So, all right, guys, I have put together all these tools. Now, listen, I've linked them all in the description of this video, as well as I believe I've linked a couple of, of videos of mine that are on my channel in the description of this that may answer some questions for you too, as far as like the, I think the pet wash video I've linked in there. And also I, I linked a whole playlist. This is a good one. The playlist is linked in the bottom of the description of this video that is talking about um, blades, clipper blades, what blades to use, how to care for them, what clipper to use, what, what I suggest and what our options are out there. And also there's a video in there about snap on comb attachments that snap onto our blade to leave length on our puppies. That is a great playlist. If you guys haven't seen it, go and watch it. Not right now, a little later, but it's really good, very informative. So let's talk. Let's talk about, hi Margaret, how are you? Classy canine clips, hello, and Normus here. Look at all my people jumping in. Thank you all for joining. I'm so glad to see you. 
Timmy's mom. I know you're Timmy's mom, Margaret. Timmy's a little chihuahua. He's so cute. All right, guys, let's talk tools. First tool we're going to talk about, the first tool in our toolbox. I'm going to throw it up here on the screen for you. It is always going to be a shear. Now, I've done a lot of research on shears. I have a lot of shears myself. This is a really wonderful starter shear, and it is made by Kenshi, and I can't say enough good things about Kenshi shears. I do really love them. They're very well balanced. They're not heavy in my hand. They, they hold a good sharp edge for, for a lot longer than other shears seem to. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. I love Kenshi shears. Now you'll notice this is an eight inch straight shear. Some of you may say, wow, that seems like a big shear. Well, it's kind of big, I get it. But listen, here's the thing. Once you start scissoring dogs, in the beginning, you're not gonna do a whole lot of scissoring, but you will very soon. Not fancy schmancy scissoring, but scissoring. You have to, you're gonna be doing it. If you're using a seven, even a six or a seven inch shear, it's really gonna affect your scissor work. So a nice eight inch shear, I'd say is a great starter shear because when you are ready to do some nice scissor work, you have that length of that, the, the shank on that blade is gonna cover some ground for you, but not too much. Not enough that it's hard to control your shear. I just think an eight inch shear is perfect. Now remember, this is my opinion as a professional, guys. There may be others that'll tell you differently and they may have good reason to argue the fact that you should or shouldn't start with an eight inch shear. Actually, I did start with an eight inch shear. So there's that one. Now, uh, as far as that goes, I don't think I have anything else to say about shears. This is a good one. An $80 shear, prime shipping is, is very affordable, trust me. Um, that is a middle of the road shear, but this particular one is, is lightweight. So it's gonna feel good to you and it's not gonna take you too long to get comfortable with this shear. That's why I chose this for you guys. All the products are linked in the description. You can go check them out. You can also go do more research on the internet about these, these shears and get the information needed. But $80 is, is, is really pretty decent, I'll say that. All right, so let me just pop in the chat and see if there's any questions so far. I'm gonna to try to, to, to um, follow, with, follow along with you guys. I mean, I have to say it, I, have, I, I will have a royal poodle. <laughs> well, you do have a royal poodle, I know you do. Are you getting one? Are you getting a new poodle, Lise? Because, no, you have a Bernice Mountain Dog and a Golden. Wow. Maggie says, Timmy's mom. Okay, um, Classy Clips, is this one lighter than Gators? Uh, I like my Gator Shear too, Classy K9 Clips. The Gator Shear is a guide Shear. I, I, was t I was tossed up whether I was gonna put that one up here as my beginner Shear. I use a Gator Shear on a regular basis, to be honest with you too. So that's a good Shear. Uh, I believe it's the Gibe Razor is another one that I really like. Affordable, all right around the $80 range. Um, I can't guarantee you classy canine clips if the gator is heavier or lighter than that particular Kenshi shear that I just showed you. I know they're all pretty comparable, I can say that. So she says, yes, I am getting a baby poodle. Oh my goodness, Lisa, I'm so excited. Is it gonna be a standard? Boy, you better keep your scissors sharp. You're gonna be scissoring all the time. You're gonna to have to let me know more about that, Lee. Send me an email and pictures. I wanna know more about this puppy. I'm very excited. That's great. Lee's is a groomer too, guys, just saying. We'll send you pics, yes, of, of the future parents. Sorry that I won't interrupt any. No, 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 it's good. Stop, Lee, it's good. We're happy for you. All right, guys, let's move on to our next product. The next product in our toolkit is going to have to be a comb, okay? And not a scissors. Why is this scissor showing up? Hang on, guys. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. So this comb, I really like it. I have one. This is an Andis comb. It's definitely durable. 
not too heavy. Um, it's got a nice rounded bind on it so that you can do a little bit of like comb over scissor type technique, which I do like to use. And as, as you move forward in grooming, you will find you will be utilizing a lot of those techniques with your scissoring guys when you're doing thinning shear work, scissor over comb, that type of stuff. Um, so, so your tools, if your comb is real big and bulky, you're going to find it a little awkward to work with. So I, I chose this comb for you guys because it's not only affordable, it's durable. It also has both larger teeth and smaller teeth, finer teeth, as you can see, which is important on a comb because you can just easily flip it around if you need to use those the, for that finer edge of your comb. Let's say if you're you know trying to work pick out a piece of undercoat you know if you're detangling you're going to go for those teeth that are a little bit more spread apart because it's a little more forgiving and it gets in there a little better but this is a good comb and as you can see it's very affordable it's nine dollars and 94 cents prime shipping so and and listen they do have two sizes i i never ever use a small shear i always get the 10 inch this is the 10 inch that you can choose the seven and a half if you've got a really teeny weeny dog i'd say okay if you're only grooming your dog at home but if you're a groomer you need a, a comb that's big enough for whatever job you're gonna do and i often use you know a big comb on no matter what dog i'm using i rarely use small combs i don't know if i'm just so used to using big combs that they don't feel comfortable in my hand the little ones but they really don't i like the big comb so this is a 10 inch for approximately $10. All the products are linked. Guys, you can go check them out if these are something that you're, that you're needing. Um, and MN Country Girl says that I have this comb and I use it on Maggie. Maggie's her Labradoodle. Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's a good choice you did there, MN Country Girl. That's, that is a good comb. You did good. Classy Canine Clip says, I see only the very tip is fine or any specific reason for that versus half fine and half coarse. Sometimes you'll see on certain combs it is half and half, but for the most part, guys, we use the wider part of the teeth, the, the wider teeth. That's what we use mostly for scissor fluffing, for um, dematting, even detangling. The fine teeth we don't use as much and we only use it in more concentrated areas so that's why you'll notice that on this particular one and i think it was a very professional idea that they designed it this way we don't use that fine fine tooth comb all that often so to have half of the comb be taking up that real estate I think that was that would just not you wouldn't be using it as much so I think they designed it right by not having such a large area on the comb that is that is the finer teeth that's why you'll be using the separated the bigger teeth more than you would that so that that's why and and that's a good design so there's the comb guys okay now can anybody guess what the next thing in our toolbox should be we got a comb what else do we need well yes we need a brush okay so let's take a look at a slicker brush now i'm talking affordable tools here today guys but at the same time i'm talking about tools that will produce good results for you this all systems slicker brush it's a good one they come in three sizes i do believe that i've linked all three sizes which is a small medium and large and i definitely think yeah, we're looking at the large right here um typically i would have a small and a large one, you know, one for anything cocker spaniel size and larger is gonna get my large brush. Anything, you know, Shih Tzu, Schnauzer, you would probably go for that small brush. I don't think it's necessary to buy one of each, like one small, one medium, one large. You could, obviously, as you can see, they're, they're affordable brushes. And these are good slicker brushes. That's why I put them up here. They are good slicker brushes. These are the type of slicker brushes that I started with. These, the Andes brushes, and they do the job. They, they de-shed, they de-mat, they get out undercoat. They, they work very nice. What I like about these, as you can see, they're, they're, kind of, they're pretty flat. There's not a lot of um, rim around this brush to get in your way. 
That's what I like about this brush. It's just a good brush and it's nothing fancy, but it does a good job as a slicker brush. So that's why I chose to put this one up there, guys. All right, now Debbie Jack says, I use my wide tooth comb a lot. Oh my Kali, I bet you do. Because, and, and, and Kali's have a lot of undercoat. Yes, that makes sense. And that's why that comb, Debbie, you know, didn't have such a large area that, that had the fine teeth. Yeah, Debbie says brush, way to go. She's right, absolutely. So this is the one, guys, I'd say this is a good one. Now I can sit here and, you know, if you want me to, when we're done going through these tools, I can name you off a hundred other brushes that I like, you know, but you really, we're talking about something that does a very good job, that's somewhat durable and isn't gonna break the bank. We're talking about we're starting grooming. We don't wanna spend $70 on a brush right now. Eventually you probably will. You really don't have to. I can tell you that. It's a little more work if you're using a brush like this on, on a very high maintenance coat, like let's say a doodle. A lot of doodles are very high maintenance, they're coat type. So yeah, the Kinchy brush would be better, I'll tell you that, the uh, Chris Christensen brush, the Activet brushes. But I will also tell you this, you will be able to do it with this brush Everything you need to do, you'll be able to do with this brush. So that's important. I, I wanna make sure that I confidently tell you guys that. All right, so let's look at our next product. Our next product happens to be a nail trimmer. We can't groom dogs without a nail trimmer. This is my favorite one, guys. It's always been my favorite. And as you can see, it's only a $5 trimmer. It's nothing fancy, it doesn't make noise, it doesn't light up, it doesn't, it doesn't clip your dog's nails for you. But this is a plier style nail trimmer and I, I love this one. I've been using it for years and years and I've tried many other ones and I always go back to this one. It's so easy to use in my hand. It's lightweight so it's not cumbersome. It doesn't make a snapping noise like some of them really pop when you cut a nail. This one, it cuts a nail, it's very sharp, but it doesn't snap and pop as much as a lot of other nail trimmers do, and that's why I believe dogs like this one better, just as much as I like working with it better than some of the other ones. So, very inexpensive, guys, $5. This is prime shipping, and it is absolutely my favorite, and it's made by Miller's Forge and they stay sharp for quite some time. So do I use this on large breeds? Absolutely. The only time I need a different clipper is if I'm using a dog, clipping a dog's nail that is, the nail is almost into the bed of the nail, the pad, then I have to have something that opens all the way up and gets around the nail. This is a plier style clipper and it doesn't open all the way up as far as the tip goes. And I will show you what I mean right now. I would get mine out here and show you. So let me get this off the screen. That's as far as it opens. See, if you had to get a nail in there, like if you had to get around a nail, you couldn't. You would have to get more of a, you know, a clampy type clipper. But typically, I use, it's rare that I am not able to trim my client's nails, dog's nails with this one. It's rare. It's usually if the nails are so overgrown that they're almost grown back into the pad, then I need something that's gonna get around the nail to cut it. And that's not very often. All my clients are on a schedule and I rarely ever see a nail that is bad like that. So. That would be the only time that clipper wouldn't produce for you and you would need a bigger one. But the thing is, you're gonna wanna use this one all the time and only go for that other one that opens all the way up only if you need it in situations. Cause like I said, all the other ones, they pop, they make noises. Dogs don't like that. I really like that. Kimberly, hi! Kimberly's from Holland. She is up late tonight to be with us, guys. Thank you, Kimberly. I'm so glad you're here. All right, so Ginger Hughes says, got the scorpion shears and the thinners. That's made by Kenshi. 
The Scorpion is very nice. I hope you like it. It's weighted very nice too. Nice sharp cut, good price. They are, they're very affordable. Met with new groomer today for Joey and an appointment Thursday. She went over him and feels confident. I'll let you know. Awesome, I can't wait to hear. Um, Ginger's been looking for a groomer for her little Joey. He's so cute. Okay, MS loves to draw. That's Mary. Hi, Mary. Go, oh, you jumped in. Thank you. So glad you're here. All right, we're talking tools tonight, Mary. Hey, you'll have to go back and watch later. You'll like this episode. Okay, so next tool, guys. We just talked about nail trimmers. Well, we can't have a nail trimmer without this. If we don't have this, we could get into trouble. Every now and then, we will nick the quick of a dog, okay? It happens. It happens to all of us. Um, I'm not talking about cutting deep into the quick, you know, but we get close. And sometimes it'll draw, you'll see a little blood to the surface. You've got to have septic powder on, on hand, guys. This is the quickest, easiest, safest way to immediately stop the bleeding if you quick a dog's nail too soon. Now, I will also, or too close, I'm sorry. I will also tell you guys, this is good to have on hand because... Now, I've experienced this. Many of you may have already experienced this yourself. I had a pug who got his little nail stuck in the, like the door jam of the door coming into the house one day, and, and, it, and it spooked him when it happened. And he pulled his nail so hard that he ripped it and shattered it. And part of the quick was exposed. It was awful looking. And it was gushing, gushing blood. Now, the first thing I did was I put a lot of pressure on it first. I didn't want to grab that septic. It can burn. The septic powder can burn and ting, oh, ting a little bit, sting, you know? And we're talking about, you know, a really short, quick like that. He was in pain already. So um, I, I held pressure on him real tight with a towel, real tight. He didn't like it. He was really upset, but it was gushing blood. So afterwards, I did doctor it up a little bit with septic, but I was very sparing about how much I put on there because it was such a bad cut, his nail. Um, but you would only use septic on a nail. Don't ever use it on a cut. It's it's not really made for flesh. Um, it's, you know, if you cut a dog and you can't stop the bleeding with pressure, then give the mom a call and say, where's your I'm going to meet you at your vet, you know, just have the vet take care of it. But you wouldn't put septic on a cut. Okay, guys, I do want to say that. All right, so uh, septic powder we talked about. Any more questions? Let me just follow along with you guys. Uh, yeah, the, the tip looks wide. Are we talking about the clippers and hard to get between nails and pad? Yep, if you had one that had one, a nail that was real close to the pad, that you'd have to have a different clipper. But uh, like I said, I, I, it's maybe once every two months that I have to clip something other than with this one. That's my favorite one. Okay, and Mary says, I'll definitely go back and watch. You'll like it, Mary. Okay, Debbie Jack says, does septic powder go bad? Yes, that's a good question. It doesn't exactly go bad, but what happens to it is, especially in a grooming shop, there's a lot of moisture in a grooming shop because you're drying dogs and obviously there's a lot of bathing and dogs shaking. There's a lot of moisture in a grooming shop or in a mobile grooming unit as well, a grooming van. Steptic will get, it will all clump together. See, because it's a powder, okay? So you want to be able to put a little bit, I usually put a little bit in the lid and then I lick my finger and I touch it in there and I get it on my finger and then I put it on the nail and hold it there. You want to hold it for at least 10 seconds and put a little pressure on it when you have this septic powder on to stop bleeding and that's it, you're good. So here's what you do to get the most out of your septic powder. And if I could reach mine, I would, but I can't. Keep it in the refrigerator. So got another little container that you're gonna to take to work with you, or if you're a home groomer, um, separate it in different containers and keep the rest in the refrigerator where the climate will not change. And it will allow it to get all clumpy and everything. So other than, other than that, once it gets clumpy, you know, one thing you can do is smash it all up and it, usually it's just so frustrating, I end up throwing it away and grabbing another one. 
And they're what, about $7? Uh, well, this is five. I, I did choose this one because it was very affordable. There, there's another brand that I use. There's one called Quick Stop. It's a little more. That was about eight dollars. And there's also a brand that I get from Groomer's Choice, and I can't remember what it's called at the moment. It's not this one, but Steptic Powder is Steptic Powder. No worries, guys. It does what it's supposed to do. But this one was affordable, so that's why I threw it up there. But that is something that you have to have in your grooming kit because sometimes. Even if, you know, you're, you're, you're very comfortable cutting your dog's nails or whatever, it, it, the dog moves a little bit or just a little bit can cause the nail to get quicked a little bit. And not a terrible, but it's going to want to bleed a little. you got to put something on it, okay? So it's got to be in there. Thinning shears is the question that MN Country Girl Gal has. Uh, classy, doesn't, it doesn't have... Benzocaine in it yet yeah, for numbing? Yeah, I think that's why they flinch a little. I don't know, but it does have that in it. It's, but I don't like to use it on flesh really. If it's a, if it's a tiny little like paper cut in a in a pad, I may use a little steptic there after I cleaned it up, like with um, just with water, and then I put some triple antibiotic on it. And then if I notice the cut still looks because they're walking on it. I might put a little steptic on it, but I always tell the owner, you know, hey, we got a little paper cut here, and I'll show them. Always show them, you know, they realize their dogs and they're moving, and and sometimes, you know, we're talking. This is tedious work, so usually your your owners are very understanding as long as you're honest with them. You know, don't leave, don't let any surprises for them to find at home. Then they get upset with you, and rightfully so. You know, um, Ashley who says another thing you can do is take. 3cc syringe and and oh 3cc is a syringe and cut it off i pull the plunger back a little bit and it creates a powder okay plus it makes it easy to apply to the nail oh that certainly would so you put the steptic in there in the syringe with a little bit of water maybe i think that yeah that sounds like a good idea that you can have it set and ready for the day, I guess. So that would be kind of cool, actually. I like it. Good job, Ashley. All right. Hey, guys, guess what's the next thing we're going to need? We're going to need a clipper. I wonder if any of you know what clipper I'm going to tell you that you should buy only ever one clipper on the market that is the best. And I am not affiliated with this company whatsoever, but I think they make one heck of a clipper and I'm loving it. And it's the wall clipper, the KM10. This is it. It's linked below if you guys are interested in it. This clipper is very comfortable. I've used many clippers, guys. So I'm gonna tell you my honest opinion on clippers. This one lasts. It's much, much durable. I have not replaced any parts on my K910 clipper, and I've had it, it's gotta be at least five years. I have not replaced a drive. I have not replaced anything oh I lie I did have to have my local um, motor company here the little their small motor engine repair company whatever electric motors I had to have them replace the uh, the cord was getting shorted out because I use it all the time and half the time I trip over it which probably doesn't do it any good but that was it and 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 the cord replacing not I didn't have to replace the cord he just cut it and and re did it so I lost like a quarter inch off my cord not a big deal um, but that's it that's the only thing I've had to do uh, the, 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 this thing is so durable it is origamically very comfortable to make to handle this clipper and especially when I'm talking you know big clip downs matted clip downs where you're shaving for long periods of time a lot of clippers definitely fatigue my wrist and in the past like, uh, my Andes clippers are for a while the only thing I was using was the Andes the Osters are very heavy I see classy canine clips says he uses Oster Turbo I'm I do not like that clipper it often needs repairs you got to change those carbon brushes not everybody knows about those carbon brushes and then it doesn't work right if you don't change the carbon brushes it shakes and rattles and it's it feels like it's trying to fall apart in your hands um, it's heavy I didn't care for it. I will say this about the Oster Turbo. It is a powerful clipper. Will this K910 stand up to it? Absolutely. 
I love it. That's my favorite clipper. And they're all about the same price. I think the Oster, like the A5s are, are, I don't know, they may be like $150, $160. They're all about the same price, guys. So I'm telling you which one I really like. It's also a two-speed clipper. I like that, and you wanna know why two-speed comes in handy sometimes? Two-speed clippers come in handy sometimes because if you're clipping around a dog's face and you want the clipper to vibrate less, maybe be a little quieter, then put it on the low speed. Sometimes dogs get nervous with the sound of a clipper if it's real close to their ears or their face. So then you can just use that lower speed. You also can use the lower speed to save um, the coolness of your blade. You know when we're clipping, our blades are friction's building up. You know, that clipper, and these are powerful clippers. They're moving that blade really fast. Well, if you have it on high speed, your blade is going to get hotter faster. And that's only if you're using a blade. If you're using snap-on combs, you're fine because the blade never comes in contact with the skin. But if you're using a 10 blade, a seven blade, a five blade, a four blade, that is in contact with their skin. And if you're clipping on high speed, your blade is gonna heat up faster than it would on low speed. So we'll talk about a product here in a minute that's gonna help you out if your blade gets hot, what to do. So no worries, I'm sure half of you already know. Lise, go ahead and throw it in the chat. Tell them what it is, I know you know what it is. All right, Jennifer Jordan says, is the Andes five speed a good one? I think it is, uh, I believe that's the one that has the button. I never had that one. A friend of mine who is a groomer did and it, there was a problem with the switch. Not, I mean, all these, they just don't hold up. The Osters, the Andes, there's problems with like the, the mechanisms that make it work that you have to fix all the time, stuff like that. So I would say, listen, Andes is a great clipper. They make a great clipper. I used Andes for years, but I will say this, I often had to replace the drives in them because they must be cheap and not very durable. Maybe they've made them better since, five, six years ago, but I've never replaced the drive in my KM10 and I use it professionally all the time. So I, I can't say enough about that clipper. It's wonderful. Okay, laugh out loud, was kidding, I totally agree. Oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I missed a few things up here. Okay, let me just see if I get any more questions. Lee says, I use a low speed usually but when I use a comb attachment, I go for full speed. That makes sense because when you're using a comb attachment on top of a 30 or a 15 or a 10 blade, you want that blade moving fast so that you don't get any lines in your clipping, you know, because the, the comb attachments tend to want to leave those lines. So yeah, when you're using comb attachments, I agree with Lise, you would want that up fired up on high. I typically use my clipper on high all the time unless I'm trimming around a face or if a dog is, is minding it. Um, I also use a clipper vac system which helps to keep my blades cool because it's always got that airflow on the blade itself. So that helps me, but if you don't have a hair vac system, then you don't have that option. So, you know, clipping on low sometimes is fine. If you're clipping a very th thick, heavy, dense coat, you're probably gonna wanna go on high. You're gonna want that clipper to rip right through that, you know, and the quicker the better. All right, so uh, Lee says, I have many clippers. I use only three. I use my KM10, a mini Brevera, and the Brevera. Those are all made by Wall, and they're actually wonderful clippers. Um, my Brevera I used for years, and something happened with it. Actually, I think it was the battery, and I never replaced it. I threw it in the drawer. Can you believe that? And I stopped using it. That was stupid, wasn't it? I love that clipper. For pads, for face, feet, tail, private, sanitary, that kind of stuff, loved it. Um, Jennifer says, my Andis wasn't cheap. No, they are not, but I want what's going to last for sure. If you recently purchased, purchased your Andis, Jennifer, stick with it. Andis is a good clipper. When it comes time to replace your clipper when you're tired of fixing it or whatever, consider that KM10. Honestly, I love it. I really love it. And it's lightweight. Blows my mind. A clipper can be that powerful and that lightweight. Uh, they, they nailed it. 
It's it's my favorite. Classy Canine Clips says, yeah, switches are switches are in my way of holding. I'm always turning it off. Oh, I think yeah, that happens a lot, depending where the switch is on your clipper. I think the, the uh, Oster A5 has it on the end, just kind of out of the way usually, but I think you can, when you're working, you can knock that switch off. It's been a while since I used the Oster cl clippers. I used them probably for about three years straight. I, I think I went through two or three that's how much quickly I went through those Oster Clippers. I was like, okay, I'm done with that brand. I don't, I'm done with it. And Kimberly says, I have a Heiner, uh, I think she might, the pink one. And I love that clipper. Kimberly's from Holland. I think you have the, is that a wall or is that a German brand, a European brand clipper, Kimberly? Let me know. Um, it looks like it might be the wall the pink one maybe not maybe let me know is that its own brand kimberly see because kimberly's in holland she may have different manufacturers that we don't have here in the states so i'd like to go check that out and just see what it is jennifer says my aunt my andis blisters my fingers yeah that means it's it's just not that comfortable in your hand you know Ashley says, is the KM10 lighter than the Andis Ultra Edge? Close, probably about the same. I used the Ultra Edge before I had my KM10 and I liked that clipper, but it kept falling apart. <laughs> so I said, no more, I'm trying wall. Okay, Kimberly a what? Yeah, see Kimberly's from Holland. She's, she's from Europe guys. So this might be a different brand. That's why I was interested. Ha ha, hi there. That's the brand. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. I wonder if it's even available to us in the States. Okay, so guys, let's move to our next tool in our starter grooming, grooming kit. What would we need? Well, we talked about a clipper. We cannot use a clipper without blade oil. You have to have blade oil, guys. Okay, now this is wall blade oil. This is the cheapest I could find. In my opinion, blade oil, clipper blade oil is clipper blade oil. The Andis is often a little bit more expensive than the wall. So here, buy the wall, it's $2.68. It's just clipper oil. And you need to keep, keep your blades oiled well to keep them lubricated, clean, um, corrode, they won't corrode on you and they will stay sharper longer. I oil my blades before and after every use. That means every dog before I use it on that dog and after I use it on that dog. Yeah, definitely. And, and I get a lot of life out of my blades, guys. I get months and months and months out of my blades and I groom professionally. I groom quite a few dogs. If you're only grooming at home, you're not grooming as many dogs as I am. So clipper oil has to be in your grooming kit. I bet it's in Mary's. Mary has a grooming kit for her little Havanese dogs. MS loves to draw. So that's a must, okay? You cannot, you cannot avoid oil on your, your blades or you will be going through them very quickly and they will doll out on you. Now, here's the Andis Cool Care. This is what I was telling you earlier about if your blade heats up. Now, I use Andis Cool Care in combination with my blade oil. I still oil my blades before and after every use. I use the Andis Cool Care to clean them up, to also cool them down if I need to. So this is a five in one, it's a coolant, a lubricant, let me see if I can remember what all it is. Coolant, lubricant, rust preventative for your blades. Um, what else is it? Five more things. Disinfectant, it's a disinfectant. That's why I use this in addition to the oil, to clean the blades, to disinfect them. That's the main reason why I use the Cool Care. Cause like I said, it doesn't, I don't have the problem my blades heating up too often because of my clipper vac system that's keeping air on my blade. So, but it, this I use to be safe with um, transferring anything from dog to dog. So this is what I use to disinfect my blades. And I show you guys in my demo, the playlist that's linked below uh, has, has, um, the one video is about clipper blades. And in that we talk about how to use this product and how to care for your blades and what blades to use. So guys, it's a good one. You should go watch it if you have any questions regarding 
clippers, blades, or snap-on combs because that playlist covers all those areas really well. Okay, yeah, Mary says, I have that one. See, I knew you did, Mary. I knew it was in your kit. All right, so there's the cool care. We finally let that cat out of the bag. That's a great product. Oster makes, um, and Wall, they all make a comparable product to the Andis Cool Care. I'm, I'm thinking that the Andis Cool Care is the only five in one spray. So I usually go for that one. I like it. Classy Canine Clips says, I'd like to know more about the, the Hunger, Hunger Clipper, where to get one and what they're like. Me too. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up when I'm done with this because I'm really curious too. I'm excited. But like I said, Kimberly's in Holland. She probably has access to different things that we don't and she probably doesn't have access to some things that we do. So it's kind of a bummer. Norma says, sorry, I have to take Duke for a walk. Well, he's pulling my shirt. Hey, I understand, Norma. Thank you for joining us. You go back and watch later if you want to finish up. We love you, Norma. Thank you for coming. Classic canine clips. My blade sharpening guy said that cool lube ruins blades. Um, hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, I uh, may, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I get a lot of life out of my blades, guys. I can't say that, that I would agree with that. Because I use it at the end of the day to clean the blades. While the blade's running, I'll spray a little in there, let it run through the blade. And then, like I said, I, if you're using it in combination with oil, your clipper blade needs clipper oil. I would never say to use the Cool Care as your oil only because I don't think it's good enough. <laughs> Love you too. Bye, Norma. So I'm not sure about that, you know, but blade sharpening guys, they know their stuff. So I don't know that I would say that. Now we talked about blades. Let's, let's talk about blades. If you are a beginner groomer, there is only one, two, three, four blades that you need to purchase. And I would purchase two of each. And that's included in my under $1,000 startup cost. Two of each of these blades, and I'll tell you why. Because sometimes when they go dull, they go dull. You could be in the middle of a number seven clip down and your number seven goes dull. What are you gonna do now? You've got to have a second blade, okay? Another reason to have a second blade is if your blade does get hot, oftentimes you just pop that seven off, put it down, let it cool off, get the cool one, the one that you haven't used, pop it on there and you're good to go. So if your blade's getting hot, if you have two of each blade, you're covered because you just take the hot one off, let it sit there, it'll cool off in like five minutes. And you put the cool blade on and off you go. And you continue on so these are the blades that you need and I'll tell you why you need a 30 blade and I like the wall ultimate competition series detachable blades for my detachable blade clipper which is a wall cam 10 I like these they definitely stay sharp longer I don't have any issues with any corrosion or anything I've just come to really like these blades and I've noticed some other blades that I were using didn't seem to last as long sharp wise as I thought they should and I don't usually get let down with this series of blades the reason you need a 30 blade you can use it in the pads of your dog's feet only never use it in the sanitary it's way too short it will cause major irritation to your dog but if you're very careful and don't apply any pressure you can use a 30 blade in the pads of the feet to clip out the pads. If you wanna be on the safe side, guys, then use a 10, okay? Now, the only reason you really truly need a 30 blade is if you use snap-on combs. And we're gonna cover snap-on combs here in a second. And the 30 blade is my favorite blade to use under the wall snap-on, stainless steel snap-on combs, which are my favorite ones. Um, it cuts really beautifully underneath that snap-on comb. Sometimes a 10 or 15, doesn't, it just doesn't seem to cut as smoothly under a snap-on comb. My favorite's the 30. You cannot use a 40 under a snap-on comb because it's 
the, the size of the blade itself is too small and the combs will not fit on it. So the shortest blade you can use under a snap-on comb is a 30 and I like it because it cuts beautifully under there. So you need two 30s because like I said, if one goes dull, you need another one. We also need two number 10 blades. We always need a number 10 blade. This is what I would recommend anybody use for sanitary area, um, around the ear lobes if you're venting a dog's ear, um, even the pads of the feet. The, the anus, the sanitary, all that, a safe blade is a 10. You can cause irritation with a 10, but it doesn't typically happen. It's pretty safe. So I do wanna say that you would need 10, two 10 blades as well. You also need two seven blades. Seven is a typical blade size for let's say a summer clip down. This is as short as I will clip a body of any dog. I will never go to a 10 blade on the body unless they're so terribly matted that I have to get through the mat with a 10, but I still will go back to the seven once I get through the mat. Um, it's pretty short. It's not skin short, but this is as short as I will go on a body blade, guys. This is it. Um, and a seven blade is typical summer cut. If you all live in Florida, Norma lives in Florida, seven, there's probably the groomers in Florida and North Carolina and all those hot places, they're probably very used to using a seven blade because it, it, you know, these dogs get hot and they're out being active. So people like to cool them down in the summer months. That's seven blades. So you need two of those. You also need, uh, you can hardly see that. It's a five blade, a 5F, two 5Fs. These are the only blades you need. 30, 10, 7, and 5. Now you say, well, why do they make so many blades? But you're telling me I only need four blades, a 30, a 10, a 7, and a 5. I'm going to tell you right now, the reason you only need those blades is because of these babies right here. These wall stainless steel snap-on guard combs produce beautiful quality work, and you can leave whatever length you want to leave on your dog with these and it does a really good job now you, i put my snap-on combs on top of a 30 blade like i said before do i have a four blade yes do i have a three and a half blade yes do i ever use them no i don't this looks better than a four blade these snap-on combs the way they trim they trim better than a four blade so that's why I can honestly tell you, you really only need a 30, a 10, a seven, and a five. The rest we're gonna cover with these guard combs. And these are my favorite. And this, is, this whole set is $39.94. Now I also do wanna tell you guys, you can buy them individually on, on Amazon or through Chewy.com or Groomer's Choice, whatever. You can buy them individually. Or if let's say you accidentally break one, you can replace it. That's the nice thing about it, is you don't have to buy the set, but you definitely want to buy clippers, snap-on combs, and blades, because I, t I go into detail about snap-on combs as well for you, so that'll help clear that up. But, okay, so we're getting close here, we're getting close. Let me just catch up on my, uh, on my chat here, so, okay, um, talking about the European clipper, everybody's like, hmm, I gotta check this out. Uh, it it is an expensive clipper. I bet it's a good one. German. It's probably German made. It's probably really good. But I really love that one. And it is cordless. Wow. So it's a powerful cordless clipper. Can really see. I have to try that one. I need a good cordless clipper. Jennifer says, Oh, I have a stainless steel wall snap-on combs. Oh, I have them. Yeah, they're great, aren't they, Jennifer? Good for you. They did good. Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly says it's a great clipper. Okay, yep, and Classy Canine Clips says, yep, I use 7F a lot, absolutely. So those really are the only blades that you need, guys. You need the 30, that's gonna use, you're gonna use it under your snap-on combs. You need a 10 for sanitary areas and around the corners of a dog's eye. It's a safe place to use a 10. You need a seven and a five. In my opinion, those are the only blades you need. And then you need a set of snap-on combs for $40. And you're good, you can groom any dog, any dog. Now what's next on our list? This is important, cheap but important. Mixing bottles. All shampoos are dilutable, guys. These mixing bottles are very helpful. Now this is a set of three. I thought it was a pretty good bargain and I know 
you know, I'm going to recommend you guys. I haven't gotten there yet. I always recommend to condition a dog too, okay? We're not showing our dogs, so we don't have to worry about softening the coat too much or whatever. We like, we like a coat that we can work with. Conditioner helps get you there. So one of these will be for shampoo. One will be for maybe even a degreaser, depending on your dog. And, and then the other one will be for your conditioner. And uh, the ratios are on there, very easy to mix. It's such and such part you know, like one part shampoo to say 16 part water. If it's 16 to one, it's 16 parts water, one part shampoo. All the ratios are on there. These mixing bottles are really handy dandy. Um, <laughs> sorry, my internet's slow. Oh no. Um, so this is a necessity guys, if you're for your grooming kit, in my opinion, absolutely. Now, obviously we're gonna need shampoo. This is a great shampoo. TropiClean makes good shampoos and conditioners. They're safe, they're biodegradable, they are detergent free, soap free, they're safe. Now there's a lot of, lots and lots of shampoos that are, I'm, I'm not saying they're not, but I like to recommend this line to you because it's also an affordable line. That's why I like it. It works good and it's affordable. You can use whatever shampoo you want, just research it. So this one here is $36.52 prime. This is a really good one. This is the deodorizing coconut, uh, I think it's aloe as well. Yeah, aloe. So that's a good one. This is a gallon. Don't forget it's dilutable. Can you see there guys? It's 16 to one dilutable. See that down on the bottom of the shampoo? That's the ratio. Most all shampoos will have the ratio of their dilution on the bottle and follow that because if you're not diluting your shampoo and conditioner, you're not getting the best out of the product. It's made to be diluted. If you don't dilute it, it will be clumpy and it won't do its job right. So don't forget, if, if it says it's dilutable, follow the instructions to dilute it. I love that shampoo, says Classy Canine Clips. It is a good one. I love all their products. So let's couple that up with some conditioner. This is something that must be, you must have as a starter groomer, shampoo and conditioner. This is a good one too. This is the Kiwi Coconut Butter Moisturizing Conditioner. And it also dilutes 16 to one. It's very affordable, $40 prime free shipping, and it's a gallon. It's gonna last you quite a, quite a while. So that's a good one I recommend. All these products are linked in the description below if you wanna go check them out, if you're interested, if it's something that you need. Um, I have those, the hair keeps bunching up in it. I'm not sure. Oh, the snap-on comb. Oh, every now and then you gotta pop your snap-on comb off and take a toothbrush and, and depack your blade. Your blades will get packed, especially if you're clipping a cottony coat, like um, a Cocker Spaniel. Um, if you're clipping a Bichon, a Poodle, a Doodle, you have to keep popping that snap-on comb off, unpacking the blade, and go back to town. It's just the way, it's just the way it goes. Um, it gets stuck in the teeth of the blade is what happens. Okay, the next thing we're gonna need as a beginner pet groomer is a, nope, not that, that's next, tub leash. Now I made a tub leash last week, guys. You should go check out my video. You can make one too. It's a safer one than this. I'm not crazy about the noose style leashes, especially the tub leashes. So I made one out of bungee paracord that seems a lot safer and I've been using it on the pets in my shop. Now this is, a, I like this because it also has a suction hook guys. So if you're, if you're taking a dog, let's say you're starting grooming and you don't have the means to bathe it, um, you may take that dog to a pet wash that you're going to wash and you know a good system to keep your dog in the tub is very important because then you can work with them and they know that you you need them to work for you so this is a good one because it has that suction hook um, obviously if you have a professional tub you have hooks in your tub so no worries but you do need a tub leash that's something that has to be in your grooming kit if you're going to start grooming now we need a grooming table i have hydraulic a hydraulic table and an electric table. Obviously you can purchase that. The cheapest you'll probably get away with with a hydraulic table and grooming arm is probably gonna be around $400. An electric table is gonna go anywhere from maybe $1,500 and on up. Mine was $2,500, my electric table. But you don't have to have it. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make to you guys. This is a good portable 
big, large table, and I would use this on any dog. Even if you're grooming small dogs only, get a big tabletop because it allows you to work with the dog easier and allows you to put your tools on the table as well without the dog knocking them off because you have plenty of table space. This also comes with a grooming arm, which I think is important. If your table doesn't come with a grooming arm, you're going to need one. So definitely understand that. We're also going to need a grooming loop. I like the groomer's helper grooming loop best. This is my favorite. I have a video called, uh, I, I show you how I use that loop. Oh geez, how, what was it called? Um, bad dog grooming a bad doodle or something. Oh my goodness, I should have linked it. Anyway, I show you how to use the groomer's helper. This is wonderful. Um, it's a little different than most of your grooming loops, so I, I can't really explain it without showing you, so I'm not going to hog up all your time. It is linked in the description. They're $15 prime, or no, it's free shipping, but they I've been using them for, oh my goodness, it, most of my grooming career. I won't use anything else, so that's what I use. Um, the next thing, you, you should really have a force dryer. Now, I want to tell you that this four horsepower two speed metro dryer I had for it finally the motor finally went out and I can replace the motor I just didn't because I still have my KN10 KM what is it no I'm sorry K93 is my other force dryer that I have which I can use that on low and it's kind of equivalent to this but I loved this little metro dryer I use this guy all the time he, it, it's a very powerful, not too whiny of a motor. It doesn't hurt the dog's ears and my ears as much as some other dryers. Yes, it is $200. I get it. If you're grooming at home and you say, hey, I can't justify it, then that's fine. Don't. Just let your dog air dry, brush them out, and then you can do the clip. But if you're starting to groom, you do need a force dryer. It's very important. If you have a double-coated dog, um, who's my friend in here? that has the collie. Debbie, if you're still here, if you have, well, you probably have a force dryer or have used one. You know the benefit of a force dryer and a double coat. So it it's wonderful. I need to do a demo on force dryers. And that looks like that is our last product. So that's our 20 products that I recommend that you must have to start grooming successfully. So let me see if you guys have any more questions. Oh, you have that table. Oh wait, she has that for a golden doodle and then country gal. Good for you, I am impressed. You guys are really stepping it up with your home care. I am so impressed. Good for you. That is a good table. I really like that portable table. Irene says, me too. Really made it easy to groom and the crossbar drops down for shorter dogs. I know, it's adjustable. Isn't that great? Irene has it too. This is wonderful. Ginger says, looking for a dryer, but one that's not crazy loud. Thought, well, that Metro is a two speed. It has a low and a high. They also make a variable speed. Metro is a good, Metro makes a very good product. They've been making electric motors for years and they do a wonderful job. So, I can recommend them. They have a lot of different models. That was the 4.0 horsepower. They have different models. If, if your dog is smaller, which I think your dog is smaller, Ginger, yes, you have the little schnauzer. Um, so check into their, if you want something that's gonna last you for years and years and probably a lifetime, take a look at the Metro dryers because they are built to last. Some of the other stuff on the market, it's junk. It's just junk. You could use a cheaper one, you could buy a cheaper one, you may be replacing it. That's okay too if it only costs you $100. I don't know, you know. I, I do like quality products. Uh, the Metro is a little whiny, a little bit of a pitch. All four dryers are, I can say that. My K93 is, is horribly loud if it's on high. I have to wear earplugs. And I put air, cotton in the dog's ears because I know it has to bother them. Their hearing's more intense than ours. So, yeah, the thing with force dryers is they get the job done, they do a fabulous job, and they're a non-heated element dryer. They're safe, but they're loud. 
But that's what earplugs are for and cotton balls for your dog's ears so they don't have to listen to it either. Debbie Jack says, I want one and, and she has the collie and also a tub because I do have an area that I could make into a grooming room. Debbie's interested in be, being becoming gro a groomer, so that's pretty awesome. Debbie, I'm sure you got a lot to think about after this video. I just use a box fan to dry them, and that's fine. You wait till they're dry, and then you finish the groom. It's okay. Mary says, have you tried the dryer that's also a brush? Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, Mary, but no, I haven't. Um, I'm not sure which one. I have to look into it. A lot of things are just just gimmicks you know to get us to buy it so i'm not sure if that is one of those gimmicky things you know like the gloves you're supposed to brush your dog with no you use a brush to brush your dog with not rubber gloves i get it it's hair's gonna stick to it but that's not how you stimulate their skin you brush it so i'm really i have a problem with all these gimmick tools on the market you know guys so but i'll have to look into it mary i'm not sure if i know what you're talking about um, Kimberly says, happy hoodie. I'll look it up. Oh, I'll have to go back and see what you guys were talking about. I uh, love the Metro. She has the Metro Classy Canine Clip. She's had it for 10 years and they do hold up. I'm telling you. That's what I love about it. Um, have you done any videos about grooming puppies for the first time? Jennifer, I think you asked me this before. My Bernadoodle <laughs> flips out when I put him on the table and dry him. I don't have a... I don't have a video up on my channel about grooming a puppy. But you know what? I have a new Shih Tzu puppy that I'm getting in two weeks. And I've seen pictures of it. I've talked with the client. She's an existing client. She has another Shih Tzu as well. And she said he's really, really beautiful and laid back. And he might be a nice puppy to work with as, as far as making a demo because puppies can be hard to work with. You do have to expect that, Jennifer. You just have to keep trying to reason with them, but be firm and let them know that we're not playing here right now. No, we're not playing, we're working. You know, and you, ex you have expectations from your puppy, but puppies are always gonna push our limits. You just have to keep pushing, keep going. Eventually the dog will mature a little. And I, the dryer, yes, oftentimes they don't like the dryer. Um, there's a happy hoodie. Somebody mentioned it. Look up who was that? That was very smart. The happy hoodies go over their ears and their head and it's a material and it muffles out sound and makes them feel more secure. That might help you with your puppy, Jennifer. Look up happy hoodie. I think that could be the ticket for you and your puppy, your Bernadoodle, right? Bernadoodle. All right, guys, did I miss any questions? Uh, was it helpful? I hope it was. It was fun. I, it just makes me reminisce when I start digging back through tools and putting things together for you guys. It, it makes me remember when I was starting and what, I, what tools I started with. And I started with the bare bones tools and I added from there. But you can groom a dog, any breed, with the tools listed in this video as your starter kit guaranteed that's what i want to tell you guys okay she's going to look up the happy hoodie jennifer says and it's a bernadoodle oh man jennifer i don't think you've sent me any pictures great live session thanks lisa i'm glad you were here lisa i'm glad you were here to throw in some stuff in the chat too because lisa is a groomer many of my friends in here are groomers classy canine clips is a groomer um kimberly grooms her own cocker spaniel and she does a fantastic job a lot of you groom uh, lexi grooms her dogs Denise, Denise isn't here. She grooms her dogs. Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kimberly, for joining us. All the way from Holland. It's like 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, we appreciate having you. Um, but yeah, so guys, this is what's cool about us. We are not only pet owners. Well, we're, we're, some of us groom their, our pets at home, and some of us are groomers. All in this little community. So we have a lot to share you know, in our chats and in our comments. So I'm really thankful for, for all of you guys and everything that we do here together. And we make a difference. We definitely help. As a home groomer, my thinning shears helped a lot. Oh, I love thinning shears, Brenda. I can't, I can't do without them. Good for you, Brenda. Brenda's got a cute little dog named Manny. 
Okay, listen guys, I'm gonna throw up, I didn't get time to put a brand new subscriber showdown together for you. I was busy, we closed up our camper this week. Camping season's over. So you're welcome, Debbie Jack, going to watch it again. Okay, awesome, honey, good. It's gonna be up there for you, no worries. Um, the list is under the description below, yes. All, all the all the products are under the description of this video guys and once I kill the live stream it should come up on my channel as a video you can you can rewatch it if you need to but if it doesn't if you go to YouTube and type in whatever the title of this video is now I can't remember it was uh, um, get started as a pet groomer then you will see it come up okay until it's processed on my channel but I am gonna throw a subscriber showdown for you guys. I, I put, picked one out of the archive. I have several of them that I saved and I love them. So let's get on that. Let's throw this down. I wanna thank you guys for joining me here on this last Monday of October. And we learned a lot today. We did a lot of cool things. I'm so happy and we did it together. So thank you. I, I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you come back and see us next Monday. We're going to be chitty-chatty about some other great things, too. I promise you. So let's throw that out. Show, subscriber showdown for you guys, for my subscribers. And I will see you next Monday. Take care, guys. <laughs>